<laughs> Hello people, it's me Jess, here with another reading. Hello and welcome to our Soul Focus reading for July 2021. Although if you are coming across this at any other time period, then I feel like that's probably meant to be. Let me know in the comments. But um, yeah, so you guys know how this works. I got three piles, pile one, pile two, pile number three. And I've been doing this lately because I always shuffle this to have like the choices for us. But um, Hollyhock Abundance was at the bottom of the deck. And I just love this because I feel like the overall theme for July is going to be having some kind of abundance and I always take a really holistic view of the word abundance which is just it's not so much focused only on money and wealth in a traditional sense but it's just it's being abundant in every area of your life and I feel like whatever um, message comes through in your piles it probably is ultimately leading to some kind of abundance so um, anyways I wanted to start off by saying that but You've got three piles here. I'll put the picture up if you want to look at that. Otherwise, I'll see you at your reading. Pile number one. I love this pile. I wish this was my pile. I don't think it is, but you guys are going to have such a good July. Oh my goodness. Um, a lot of you guys are going on vacation um, because I'm literally seeing a hotel, but I'm also seeing like maybe some of you have vacation homes or something, but I just, I feel like you guys are getting away um, and you're rejuvenating your energy, you're healing. And um, like a lot of you guys, I'm just seeing, yeah, you're getting very far away from home here with the star card and you need it too. Cause I feel like um, a lot of you have been working really, really hard with the eight of pentacles. This is some kind of mastery, but it's also work that um, it's like very service oriented work and it can it, it requires a lot of attention to detail. And so I feel like a lot of you guys just need some breathing room. And when I was shuffling these cards, I kept seeing the three of cups, which is such a happy card to me. Um, it's celebration, social gatherings, um, being reunited with friends and family. It can be, you know, maybe there's some some drinkages going on, but this to me looks like fun in the sun. This could not look more like a beach to me if it tried with the sun and the Ace of Cups here. So I feel like a lot of you guys are going to the beach. Like I can literally taste salt. Um, and I feel like salt actually might be important. Um, a lot of you, maybe you're uh, taking some salt baths or you literally are swimming in the ocean and that's gonna be really good and, and healthful and rejuvenating to your energy because I'm just hearing exercise right blood sweat and tears and please don't hurt yourself that blood bit you know a lot of people menstruate and so uh, if you do menstruate then maybe it's a good time to set some to do some kind of rituals you know we have midsummer coming up um I mean that's in June I don't know why I said that it's all about fertility. That's, it's really what I'm getting here. It's like, this is all about just happiness, joy, fertility. Also family is really, really being highlighted here. And especially like there's a ton of fatherhood energy. So I don't know if you're fathers or if you're going to be seeing your father or if there's something here about that, but, um, but that that's strongly coming through and, um, or some of you are fathers or your parents, or even if you're a parent, maybe you find yourself more in like a paternal role than a maternal role there for, for a minute. I don't know what I mean by that. Maybe it's just, um, I don't know what I mean by that. So, um, yeah, like, okay, you have double sun energy here and sun is the happiest card in the deck. This calendula energy is, um, also the, it relates to the sun card in this deck, but calendula is also, um, it's so good for your skin. It's it, it does a lot of skin repair. So I just want to say, if you know you're going to be out in the sun, um, definitely pay a lot of attention to your skin. And some of you guys are going to have to go to like certain athletic events, like for your kids or thing, or maybe even for yourself, um, or you're going to be being very physically active out in the sun. And it's just make sure you're wearing your hats and your sunglasses and all of that and taking care of your skin. Maybe you um, want to make actually, if you use calendula as your, as a part of your regular regimen um, and you want to make just like a, like a calendula infusion or something, it'll probably behoove you. Um, you might need that a little later. Also, I don't know why I want to tell you this, but black tea is really, really good for sunburns. And I mean, like if you brew black tea in a bowl and then you stick it in the like fridge and cool it down and then you um, put it in, um, 
you can like soak paper towels and then put it on your skin. It like sucks out the sunburn. I, I have done that before when I've been really burned. I'm not a physician, but if that's something that if you find yourself in a bit of a pinch, that's something to try. Um, so another thing, um, you guys have Venus energy here at the bottom of the deck, which this to me is Perva Falguni. Falguni means fruit. Um, and the Falgunis, if you watch my channel a lot, Perva Falguni, Uttara Falguni, those are the last two nakshatras in Leo, which you have in spades here. Also, Leo season begins in July, but um, those are, they're called the hotels of the Zodiac. So some of you guys might be staying in a hotel, but I feel like even metaphorically, your spirit is staying in a hotel in the month of July, um, or it's just saying, do what do what you can. Savor the simple moments in, in July, I feel like. Um, but yeah, it also means fruit. So maybe like eat a lot of fruit, um, have a kebab, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm just seeing you guys like hanging out at a bonfire or on the beach or something in the sun. It's just, this is such beautiful energy. Um, okay, another thing is I, I keep getting this message of like pay attention to skin. I, for a lot of you guys, just pay attention to what your skin's telling you, even if it's like just dry or whatever. But if you're a parent, like maybe pay extra attention to your child's skin or something. Maybe they're going to try to skip out on the sunscreen or something. Um, but if you're around your father as well too, maybe there's something, I don't know. There's something here about skin. Um, and with this, I don't know, there's something here about paying attention to, to um, detail here. And also, if you are a parent, there might be something that's been flying under the radar because I feel like you guys have been working really hard. And um, with this discipline card here, there might be just something that you notice in your child's behavior or something, and I feel like you can click it. Just click it into gear. It doesn't feel like overwhelming. It just feels like, oh, I'd never noticed that before. Have you always been doing that? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, but there's a lot of healing a lot of you guys are leaders um, in one way or another, and I just feel like you're getting you're getting far away from whatever has been burdening you. And it just feels like a breather, honestly, because with this strength card, this is your why card over here, like um, what is trying to get you to accomplish. And she's holding back the storm of the tornado, and she's cultivating her strength here. So, um, and yeah, uh, I don't know what else I want to say about this, but let me just come back to that one. So. The way that this, there's something here that a lot of you guys are going to be working out. I just feel like you're balancing the scales because you also have this Avenger card here. Desire to balance the scales of justice, righteousness on behalf of society or oneself. And then also with Venus here at the bottom. Um, Venus, of course, rules over Libra, which is the scales and balance. And so I feel like you're bringing yourself into harmony, into balance, into homeostasis is what I just heard. Um, yeah, which is just, you know, another kind of balance. A lot of you guys are focused on your physical self, your physical form, your physical bodies. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's something about discipline here, an athlete. So I don't know. Some of you guys are doing something with your body that's very disciplined. Um, you're getting out for a jog every day. You're, you're doing something. And it's it's just, it's help it's helping to heal and repair certain things. Um so how this is going to show up, Queen of Pentacles. So a lot of you guys are workaholics or you've just been in a mode where you've been like working, working a lot, but I can't help but notice all the abundance, all the fruit. The Queen of Pentacles is an energy. This is like, um, it's, she's considered the closest queen to the Empress and there's just a lot of abundance. It's almost like everything just very naturally flows from, from her. So maybe, I don't know, some of you guys, maybe you're going to visit like a parent or something that's where you're going on vacation um i just feel like this is just looks like abundance to me it's like enjoy the fruits of your labor is what i want to say pile number one some of you guys you've been working really really hard and the fruits of what you've been working for are here and it's just saying to savor them and enjoy them i really this is a like this is really stable with the queen of pentacles i really feel like you are the battery that's what i want to say pile number one you are the battery to so many things so it's like yeah just taking care of yourself and balancing this out so your sole focus for the month of july seems to be friends family um social gathering if you're a parent focusing on being a parent some of you guys want to make a baby in july or at least you want to practice a lot <laughs> wink um if you want to make a baby, I feel like, you know, and, and everything's like kosher and you've been talking about this with whoever you're making the baby with, why am I being so weird? Um, then I feel like it's good. Like it's auspicious. It looks like really auspicious. Um, yeah. So this is lovely. Some of you guys, I feel like, I don't know. There's something here about just like reconnecting with like your significant other or something. Yeah. 
You also have perseverance here at the bottom. I know I can do whatever I set my mind to. So some of you guys, like you have a goal that you're you're going after here. And it's just saying like, if it's hard for you to put it down in your mind, um, it's actually gonna serve you more to put it down to rest and rejuvenate because this is just the calm before the storm. I don't wanna scare you, three of swords. But some of you guys know, you, you know that there's like a big choice or a big decision that is coming coming forward. Yeah, and like some kind of big decision, life-changing decision. Um, or there could just be, I, I don't know if this is something that needs to be feared. You know, it, it's Jupiter here, but we also have the Three of Swords. I don't know, I feel like you would probably know what that is, that you have some kind of life-changing decision. Maybe some of you are thinking about moving houses. You have a lot of goals. I feel like that's that's it. You guys, you have a lot of goals. So it's just telling you to focus on your physical vessel. Yeah. Some of you guys, like, I don't know, get an adjustment, go to the chiro chiropractor, go to the massage therapist, go to the acupuncturist, go to the, you know, whoever's going to make you feel your best self, go there. Go to the beach, go to the water, soak up the water, soak up the sun. You know, get to the gym, do all these things. Like, I don't know, just reset. This might as well just be a giant reset button. But it looks so fun. Aw, take me with you. Yeah, I just, you guys are givers. Even if it's like your parent, you know, you're a parent or something like that. I just feel like everything comes from you. So that's your sole focus for July. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not getting anything else here. Because you're, well, your advice with the Knight of Swords. I feel like this is to go ahead and like go for it, you know. Um... The Knight of Swords to me is Denise to energy, which is, it's all about time. There's something here about timing and dancing maybe and music. Um, and there's a certain time to go after a goal. Some of you guys, like you're chomping at the bit to do something, but it's saying like, wait, be in the rhythm, be in the timing. Some of you guys, if you're around, like if you're outside in nature with the sun and with the ocean, there's something that's gonna get you in, um, in step, in time. There is something here that you're, you're not gonna lose at whatever this is, I feel like, with the Queen of Pentacles. This is like some kind of unstoppable victory here. And I feel like there's something that you guys wanna go off of, but timing is key for whatever this is. That's your advice. And, um, but this also kind of rules over travel. Yeah. I don't know, some of you wanna be known for something, for being a humanitarian or Yeah. I don't know, but timing is key. So uh, that's, I feel like that's all I'm getting for you guys. This is really good energy. So I hope you enjoy July. It looks like you're going to. You know what we had in, I can't remember if it's the what's ahead or it's a soul focus. Um, I think it was a soul focus for June. A lot of people, it was like they were waiting to get to July and, and maybe this is that group where you're going on vacation and um, there is some kind of repair that's going on here. Three of Pentacles. Rebellion and authority. Oof. There's some of you guys who want to apologize and make some kind of an amends for something or someone's going to be apologizing to you. I just feel like you're healing. You're healing your body, you're healing yourself, and you're healing maybe a relationship that you have. Yeah, in order to achieve some kind of long-term goal or, or to plan for your future or something like that. So anyways, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, thank you guys for watching. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye, guys.
pile number two, what is your sole focus for the month of July? So there's already so much here and I kind of, um, I'm getting a lot of messages, but I, before we get into this, I do just want to let you know that there is some more turbulent energy here to this pile. And I'm just saying that so you can make a conscious decision whether or not you want to hear the message. I also want to say that I feel like if this is your pile, you're probably not blindsided or surprised by that at all, because what you're dealing with here, it looks like you've been dealing with here for, for quite some time. And I actually feel like it's causing you some anxiety. Some of you are having trouble sleeping, um, or this anxiety directly impacts like your intestines or your abdomen in some way, like maybe your stomach just hurts or your eating is off in some way, you're craving more sugar or you're just, you're not eating enough, whatever it is, I feel like you kind of already know this. And so I just wanna put that out there because tarot is a tool and just like any tool, whether you're talking about tarot or a hammer, you can use it well and with self-awareness or um, you can use it poorly and it can have like a more destructive effect. And I just want you to make a conscious decision before we go in. So, okay, um, if you're sticking around, the soul focus here for the month of July overall, it's in this earth element. And I wanna say, and this sounds so weird to say for the month of July, like in the Northern hemisphere, and for those of us who are fortunate enough to live in countries where the pandemic is starting to wind down, July is a time where we, like a lot of people are social, there's a lot of gatherings. We have the 4th of July celebration um, and all of that. So your soul focus, interestingly enough though, in July, I feel like is isolation. It's it's buttoning down the hatches and I'm just hearing it's not over till it's over. Um, so I'm actually, seeing this energy coming through various in like two very specific ways and I'll get into that here in a second but overall I'm just seeing like with this earth element you're focused on making on the long game and making long lasting changes and that might mean and this came out in another reading I think last month but um where I talked a lot about balance like in all of the piles I think it was soul focus but um where we're talking about like taking a longer term view of balance because sometimes like in the moment, in the day, in the shorter term, we have to like throw ourselves off balance in order to gain that longer term balance. Cause this is talking about built, like again, playing the long game or building some kind of like long lasting routine. So, um, yeah, cause you're on your way. Like, I want to say this and, and you're on your way to some kind of victory or some kind of success here with the six of wands. I feel like for this pile, you guys have already been fighting a lot of battles. This man has already fought his, a lot of battles and he's won a lot of them. That's why he has all these vic victory wreaths. Um, and he's on his way back home, but he's not there yet. He's still in process and he hasn't reached his destination. And that's the big thing that I feel like for your soul focus, like that's what your soul wants you to remember is like, it is not over till it's over. And I'm actually seeing like, for those of you who, um, like you've played baseball before, they tell you you, you you run through first base, right? You don't just run straight up to the base and stop on it because um, you actually, you get there so much faster if you run through the base because um, you don't lose momentum in order to try and stop on that base. But you also have to stay out of bounds, which might be metaphorical for your situation too. Um, because as soon as you step foot in bounds, like you're in play and somebody can tag you out. So there's something here about like a finish line or a deadline that you are approaching. And it's like telling you to, to set a false deadline that is much further back than um, than what this deadline actually is because that's gonna give you the momentum to carry on and to carry through this. Okay, so um, I feel like, I'm like I said, I'm seeing this happen in like two scenarios and I feel like for most of you, this involves some kind of a decision being made. Some of you could be in court for something, or this could just be like a group, a council, a person um, making some kind of decision that could be hugely impactful here for you. But if that's the case, I, I wanna say there's an element to whatever this decision is that feels transpersonal. Like it just, it goes beyond just you. So that tells me either you're fighting for something that you believe is like a higher value, it's just the right thing to do, and you are in the position to do it. It's kind of like, part of what you owe like a collective of some kind um or this could even if it is like some of you are waiting on like a divorce settlement or to make a decision about a divorce and in that case maybe there's like a business involved or there's a child involved for some of you guys a precedent could be set in regards to like company policy or the way like a law gets interpreted or something like that but it feels like like it goes beyond you and i'm just i want to say i'm seeing chitra energy here and um I feel like Chitra's Shakti power is building up of good karmas. And so I feel like if, if this, with this transpersonal element, um, I just want to say like spirit sees you and you are building up your good karmas here, um, in regards to the situation. So, um, okay. I want to keep, I, I want to spend a lot more time talking about this. I'm seeing so many messages, but I want to say like, there's another way that this, um, 
that this message could be playing out. And that is some of you guys, I feel like you've been dealing with some sort of a health issue, but I feel like you've been recovering from something. So like an accident, a surgery, um, even this could be like an addiction, um, or like maybe some blood sugar issues or something, but I feel like there's like a, a sense of recovery because you're making some kind of progress here with the six of wands. And a lot of you could be having like routine appointments with a healthcare professional. I like, and, or this per healthcare professional is helping you to like change some kind of like habit or routine that you're doing and to build better habits. And if that's the case, I want to say again, like it's not over till it's over and to run through the base. So, um, like and also, I don't know, because I feel like the example I'm getting in my head is, um, you know, say part of like you're going to physical therapy or something as part of a recovery and your doctor is like, yeah, I really want you to get out for a light walk, you know, every single day um, until mid-July, you know, like July 13th or whatever. And it might just be worth asking this person if like, well, what if I tried to make this a healthy habit for myself? What if I kept going for a walk in the morning beyond that time? Like, is that going to hurt me? Or is that something that's still going to be beneficial? Um, because there's something here where I feel like it's, it's like make whatever the habits that you're working on, make it long term here for yourself. Um, run through the base, like set a, set a longer term goal. And, and some of you guys, like you're in the foundational stages of rebuilding those old habits. Um, Okay, and then there's another thing, especially if if with with this health example, and then I want to jump back over to the, like the decision people. But um, for some of you, like you could be recovering from some kind of addiction. I'm strongly seeing alcohol and sugar, but um, I was just listening to someone the other day where uh, he was explaining like addictions kind of just like it can be a way that we get our needs met and that we cope and you can be addicted to anything. It doesn't have to be a substance, right? It could be like your phone or something. But regardless, like if you are overcoming this addiction, especially if it is alcohol or possibly even sugar, um, I feel like that could be why you have such a focus on staying internal and isolating during the month of July because, um, you know, like they say when you're in recovery to avoid like people or places that could be triggers, especially like while you're, you know, forming your new habits and stuff. I feel like that's like what it's saying here. Maybe, maybe this year plan to not go to a 4th of July festival, but plan for it and, you know, and make something here fun because seeing yourself in process and in progress and honoring where it is that you are and knowing that, um, you know, you're not, you're not quite wherever it is that you're going yet. I'm just hearing it's not over till it's over. I feel like that's the big thing that, um, that like spirit wants you to remember here. And also because July, at least in the Northern hemisphere and for those of us in countries who are like very, fortunate you know it, it is a very social time so I just feel like it's telling you to to kind of close in in on yourself which is ah it's hard because we've just been through this pandemic but um okay so anyways that's that's strongly what I'm seeing here for that so okay so like I said for most of you I feel like this has to do with some kind of a decision that is being made and um this decision, whatever it is, it cannot be rushed. And I feel like you're going to have that sense with you here in the month of July where maybe things are moving very slowly. And um, because with the Three of Swords coming out, this is Saturn and Libra. So there's a restriction of that Libra and energy of justice. You could feel like there's a restriction of justice here in the month of July. Um, or you could just, again, I feel like uh, if you're waiting, if you think that you're going to get some kind of decision made in July, I feel like for most of you, you could receive some kind of news in July. And it's I feel like it could be a win because we've got the nine of cups here, which is a wish fulfillment. So there, there could be some kind of like, I don't know, good, good news that's coming through, but it's not over till it's over. So definitely don't be flashy. Don't be like boastful or something. Um, that's again, like do what you want. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I'm just trying to read the cards so you know what they think and you can factor that into like the decisions that you're making. That's what I'm seeing here. Um, run through the base, run through the month of July. And, and, um, there's also something here. I don't know why this would be the case. Oh, look, we've got bigger here at the bottom confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival. Yes, because that would be health. And then also maybe this, this decision could feel like it, it cuts into your physical survival. Maybe it's, um, it's work related or money related, or like, I'm I'm seeing like a person here. Um, awakens a spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. Yeah, because there is something here. This is, this is wild. This is like a weird message, but, um, 
I wouldn't drink in the month of July. I don't know. Like I just, I get a bad vibe from it, but I feel like this is telling you not to be flashy, stay small, stay humble. And for some of you guys, that's important because um, I feel like whatever has gone on here, it's a pattern. I just keep hearing three is a pattern and there's nine cups here. So like whatever has happened to you and I feel like it's, um, there's like a singular entity. I think it's a person for most of you, but maybe it is a company, but this, this person or this entity here has done this before. And so with the six of wands, um, I feel like there's something here where you could be gaining momentum behind your cause some of you guys are in leadership energy notice how he's up on the horse and everybody else is kind of um, walking so like I'm getting the vibes of and this is just an example but like of like a class action lawsuit where you you are like le leading this and other you start to realize that there's other people that this has happened to and that might actually be responsible for some of the delays that I'm seeing here um, because you're realizing that oh wait other people have been impacted by this we've got to wait for other people there could be something here like that and so um, there's something here where your public presence is growing and it could even be as simple as maybe you've taken some kind of hiatus from social media and you decide to get back on social media in the month of July. So there's just more eyes on you and you're growing in like the public space in one way, shape or form. For some of you guys, this is work related though. And it has to do with the skill that you are doing and something creative that you do. But it's saying like not to talk about, there's certain things I feel like you know you shouldn't talk about. And I want to say it's like, assets or money, money related. And definitely if there is some kind of, um, money, like, I don't know, don't spend the money or something like that. Um, I don't know why that is except for there's trickster energy around. And I actually feel like you are in this light attribute, transcending convention and stuffiness and predictable behavior. Some of you guys, I want to say you're returning to work and it's not, it's something that maybe this is like the last thing that these people expected. So what I can see here for this is like, some of you guys, a big part of this lesson is that you have maybe trusted the wrong people here in the past. Be, and I think it has to do with your own like nature. I have this theory that we, we see the world through our own eyes because we're ourselves and we, so like we can kind of assume um, or project out some of our traits, like even our really good traits, which I think is what's happened here, like onto other people. And you seem to be like very motivated by effort and honor and courage and virtue and um, you know, higher stand, like you have high standards for yourself and things like that. And so maybe, um, you opened up to people in the past that you thought were the similar. And I feel like it's one person in particular, you guys, cause I feel like there's somebody here who has betrayed you. Um, and it looks to be, it's like that seventh house issue, right? Of one-on-one -on -one relationships where maybe there's a contract involved between the two of you, whether it's a marriage contract, a business contract, a work contract of some kind, but that's the energy that seems to be in. And this person, you guys, is really, really tricky. And I want to say this person was a hidden enemy to you in the past, but now it is very much well known. And um, health issues are hidden enemies, by the way. Um, and then, but I, it's the same thing. It's like whatever this health issue is, I feel like you know it's known now to you if that's, if you're resonating more with that. But, um, and, but this person is very tricky that I'm seeing like, and they're all about getting exactly what this is that they want. And I feel like this person can be very influential and they, um, they might be very well connected. And I feel like they, they're really good with their words. They know kind of exactly the right thing to say, but I want to say this person's really good at communicating. So even like they're very strategic about what they don't say and, and things like that. And this person, I'm just seeing that there's a pattern here. And I think that you've really grown in your wisdom here, pound number two. And that's something that like it wants you to acknowledge and take with you. We have the moon at the bottom of the deck and this is strong hosta energy here. And hosta is so skillful and it is so reflective and it has a lot of skills. And Hasta, Hasta's Shakti power is that it can gain whatever it is that it seeks. But Hasta gains what it seeks through effort um, and through action. Like you have to take some kind of action. And in this case, I feel like it is restricting. So you can get what it is that you want here, but it's going to cost you. You have to do something. And in this case, I feel like it's restraint and like holding yourself back, at least through the month of July. And that might be the last thing that somebody is expecting you to do here. Um... So, and okay, I do just want to say this because I feel like some of you guys, this person is super tricky and they could be trying to like goad you into something or trying to bait you into something. Um, I just want to say like, don't lose your temper. Um, somebody could be trying to do that. There's also, I, there really is something here about like a social gathering or social situation where there's alcohol involved because um, you might just like go to this gathering and like you've got your guard down and you know, maybe you have a drink or something. And so you're, 
I'm just hearing like loose lips sink ships. You might just accidentally say the wrong thing to the wrong person and then it gets ends up getting back to this person. There's also the energy of theft here. I don't know if like that's maybe the decision you're waiting on. You feel like somebody has stolen or thieved something from you or they're trying to steal something from you. There's the energy of theft here um, to where like if you do go out and um, cause I don't know, like I, I am getting like this very like humble energy. Like, I'm, I don't know. It's like, don't wear your nice necklace. Don't wear like, I don't know. Somebody could try to steal something for you from you or, or um, I don't know, something like that. Um, there, yeah, there's something, I would just be careful in social situations. I really would as much as possible. I hate saying that. I mean, it's your life. Like you're the one making the decision. I'm just saying what I'm seeing in the cards, but I just feel like your sole focus is to be self-protective, to focus on the long-term goals. Um, and that might mean being a little bit out of balance here in the month of July. Um, for some of you guys, like this is a business partner. And for others of you, this is a marriage partner, but there's something here and this part of like your lesson. Some of you guys, you are doing like reflecting and you are paying attention to certain patterns. Some of you like this could, especially if it's a marriage, maybe you're postponing making a decision or announcing that you've been like, you're just, you're separating or something like that. Because for some of you, oh my goodness gracious, like, um, this hidden enemy could have been like your marriage partner where maybe you realized they were thieving. They were trying to like gold dig you or something, or they just wanted something from your business or like, I don't know, there's the energy of theft. And so there's something here about reflecting and this person, I'm just hearing the writings on the wall. Three is a pattern and there's nine cups here. Um, this person can have flying monkeys around them because I feel like there's a person here. And even if this person has like people backing them or a team or something, it's like, this person's the only person here that's like showing up. You know, these people are like trophies. This person could have trophies on their wall that like if, I don't know, I feel like there's something where if you reflect on it, maybe this person has bragged about doing a similar thing to other people or you've seen this person do, like you know that this person's had other business partners where it didn't work out with it. You know, I'm just hearing three's a pattern and there's nine cups. But um, so yeah, there's something to do with with that um where and and again like there's something here where like a decision cannot be rushed um and it's like thinking about the long-term goals and also you guys if this person has flying monkeys around them maybe that's why your energy is like more solid solitary now i see you out though that's the thing i see you out in public i see you having a public presence and i feel like that's good for you because some of you you're back on social media it's business as usual people are seeing you as someone successful as moving towards your success but he's up on the horse he can't really have like a conversation with people on a one-on-one -on, -one, on one to one level and that's again with the saturn and libra energy that's your advice here is to restrict restrict your one-on-one -on -one interactions where you're really, and I mean Libra in one-on-one -on -one interactions where you're on equal playing field with someone where you're like opening up because I feel like with the seven of cups at the bottom of the deck, some of you guys don't know really who you can trust because there's kind of the energy of blackmail here. Um, and I don't feel like you should be anxious about any of this. Like I said, I feel like you know this energy is around, this energy is about, and your soul is telling you you've learned a lot, you've picked up on the patterns, you know what you need to do. It's easy enough to sidestep this and to keep yourself like very contained. And I literally mean like run through the base. Remember what I was saying? Because this person's tricky. So if this is like, say, say for instance, this is a marriage partner. Then um, if you go out to some kind of a bar, maybe this has been going on for a long time and emotionally you feel ready like to date other people. You know that your marriage is pretty much done and you're like ready to date people. It's saying not to, it's saying to delay that because um, like I said, this person's very tricky. I don't really know what their angle is, but they're tricky. And I think they have people that are like around them and um, maybe they're like reporting back or something. And like, if you go out on a date with someone, they could try to paint this as a third party situation, which might put you on the defense. There's really something here about, there's something you could say or do that would put you in hot water and would have you on the defense. And it just doesn't need to be that way. Like they're saying um, the best defense is a strong offense, but like your best defense is just to remain self-contained. I feel like you've been in this energy and they're saying you're almost to the finish line. Think about the long-term results. And with this imagination card, I embrace and nourish the creative aspect of my mind. Like be creative. And I feel like if you're putting yourself out there in this public capacity, do so with your skills, with your imagination, do that. But like, don't necessarily talk about money, assets, 
things like that. Don't like necessarily share your sadness. I don't want to tell you what to say and not to say. Some of you are working with a professional that is able to help you with the details here. And that person's better to listen to for that. And, but I am seeing that there are definitely things you shouldn't say um, to certain people. And I want to say this too, like, okay, cause we've got this moon at the bottom of the deck, but then when I picked it up, I saw Scorpio, the moon debilitates in Scorpio specifically at the beginning of Scorpio. It's just this tiny little bit. And, um, it's in Vishaka energy. And I feel like there's something here where you guys have grown and changed in your wisdom. And that's telling you to solidify that, make a long-term change. And what I mean is, you know, Vishaka starts in Libra, which is a sign where you can hold your material self and your spiritual self side by side, and you can hold them in balance. There's not really a problem, but Vishaka, the kind of one of the taglines for Vishaka is that it can show you heaven, but it can't deliver heaven in part because it holds the material world on equal footing with the spiritual world. And that's not a natural state of balance that that is it, the spiritual realm feeds the material world in according to Vedic astrology. And, um, so you've got to move like kind of beyond that. So I see like, and in the past you could have had a material focus and that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. Remember with this, when I was saying that there's this abundance energy at the bottom of the deck and that it's so important to take this holistic view of abundance where you're considering your health and your vitality, your friends, your social circle, um, your, your values, like defining success for yourself, like what it means to be successful and not just zeroing in on money and assets as uh, a synonym for abundance because it's not it's so much bigger than that but if you if you narrow in on just that thing you're, you're going to get thrown off your balance is going to get thrown off and i say that because in this situation if you're make, going in trying to make a decision about something then you can make a different decision because um you've broadened up your values and that's a new thing that i feel like has happened for you where this is you're starting to be pushed into like really deciding here for yourself what uh what what success is and i feel like maybe you feel like you've been overemphasizing the material world you've been overemphasizing your assets and things like that because vishaka like it's especially motivated to have a grand house um and to have some kind of success vishaka is very motivated to achieve a lot of goals and i still feel like you have a lot of goals that you want to achieve but um now you understand because another part of vishaka it's <laughs> i'm so sorry it means like excrement you know like vish means like excrement from past lives it's a place in the zodiac where um karma kind of bubbles up from past lives like i said i feel like the karma that's kind of going on is you guys are building your good karmas especially by taking a transpersonal perspective and approach to whatever this is is that's gone on here um but you've also because of this you've gotten to know like the the toxins of your mind that's another thing that vishaka rules over and that's what's gone on here with the scorpio moon and that's where i feel like your psychology has maybe not been in the best place some of you have been struggling to sleep you've been you know feeling that anxiety in your stomach and things like that maybe some of you would like to have a therapist especially because it's it's somewhere for you to talk about you know whatever this is and maybe it does make you less susceptible and volatile just a thing but what i love i just looked over and saw this saturn because this right remember i told you the moon debilitates here in vishaka and scorpio the next nakshatra in scorpio is called anurata and it's saturn dominant and anurata is the indomitable soul it's somebody who just keep like, they just keep pulling themselves out of hard situations and they do it through their devotion. And there's something here where you're, you're getting clear on what your values are, what, how you're defining abundance, how you're defining success. And you're realizing that you're hitting those things and that's, what's going to pull you really through. And I feel like, um, okay, I'm hearing, uh, I know it's going to get better. Like it is going to get better. And there's something here. I feel like there's like a cooperative partnership because you guys are learning your lessons here about who to trust and who not to trust. Because I, I feel like that's been a big part of this for you where um, you have perhaps, like I said, trusted the wrong individuals. I see you guys are also very family oriented. So I feel like that's especially devastating if this was um, like a romantic partner that was a hidden enemy for you because you have such strong family values. Um, but, um, cause I'm getting Uttara Falguni and that's wealth through marriage. So some of you, this court decision is dividing up some kind of wealth through marriage for others of you. I feel like, uh, especially if it's like a business partner or there's something with your business that where that's where you've experienced this betrayal energy, then maybe your partner is a source of support here and you're gaining like a lot of like that holistic wealth through your marriage. Um, at this time, but there is something here that um, your, your soul wants you to focus on and reflect on. And I feel like it's like this fear of being alone. So if this was a partnership in a marriage where your partner was 
trying to thieve from you or something, then um, maybe if you go back and you can recognize your own habits and patterns and you realize that you were afraid to be alone and so um, you were trying to like move towards success or something, there's something to do with that. But if this was a business partnership, I feel like it's interesting because maybe there's something you wanted to take the helm on, but you felt like it was gonna take a lot longer that you didn't trust your own skill set or something and you thought like, oh no, well, I'll just have this other person really take the responsibility, spearhead it. And it was that like fear of, of being alone that maybe pushed you to trusting this person when maybe you, you shouldn't have or, or something like that. I'm not trying to blame you. I feel like there's just some reflection going on here because I feel like the writing was on the wall with this person. And keep in mind that this person's cards are not all on the table or this company's cards, whatever it is. They're not all on the table. It's not over until it's over. So until the ink is dried, until the money is handed over. Some of you guys, um, yeah, like there is gonna be some kind of decision that, that's going to be made. Um, and it's, it's causing you some kind of worry. One of my favorite Eckhart Tolle quotes is worry is something that pretends to be necessary, but really isn't. Worry doesn't help you make any better decisions or anything like that. It doesn't help you be on guard. It really just drains your energy. Um, and so I feel like there's, there's even a practice of like mindfulness of moving slow, anything you can do that's very grounding. Some of you, um, like clay masks or, um, maybe some of you as part of your regimen, like you do the whole thing where you drink bentonite clay or something like that. Um, or just like really any, anything very grounding. Keep in mind, I'm not a healthcare professional. And especially if this is a healthcare issue, then definitely check in with your healthcare provider. But with this change energy, I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Look, regret. I know I cannot change the past relationships. I'm attracted to those people who serve my higher good. Judgment. Yeah, some of you guys are waiting on this judgment call. I understand that everyone has their own unique path and challenges. And so um, there's nothing wrong with you that you're suffering this. You know, we all have our own unique path and challenges. And this is like leading to some kind of freedom. I possess the power and the free will to create my own happiness. So I feel like, again, like you're ending up in this Anurata energy, which is that indomitable soul energy. These are people that just, they keep, they keep, um, they keep going, they keep ticking. But a, a thing about Anurata is sometimes they can get sucked into abusive relationships. And so just make sure you don't get sucked back into this abusive relationship. And that's why I think it's telling you to like move slowly here in the month of July. Um, do not rush any decisions. Um, you know, um, and try to like f have definitely have a long term focus. Keep yourself guarded and protected. There could be some things in July where like you get this really good news. It seems like the wind is turning in your favor. And that could be somebody if this person's tricky enough, then it's like, oh, this person could kind of realize that you are going to be a little bit more open or, or open to slipping up and letting your guard down. And in the last minute, they're going to back out of whatever deal you made and they're going to demand something else. You know, I'm just telling you that energy is here because um, this person is in shadow trickster energy, manipulating others through duplicity. But like I said, you're in this light attribute, transcending convention and stuffiness and predictable behavior. You, you're being unpredictable. You're, you're busting out of old habits, patterns, and routines, and you're building better ones. Um, yeah, and some of you guys flat out, your values are changing. Venus is such an interesting planet in astrology to me. It's coming through, because this is Venus and Scorpio. So there's transformation on your Venus is what I want to say. Venus is funny because Venus for a man represents partnership. And I think astrology kind of is it's up in the air with this, but for LGBTQ, if you're a female and you're interested in females, then I would still, like if I was reading your chart, I would still look at your Venus to look at your partner. Venus honestly represents partner regardless, but especially for a male, like it represents partners. But Venus is a funny energy because it, it rules over our values, our choices, and our partners. And to me, all of those things are linked. We make our choices based on our values. So for some of you guys, it would help you to do, like in this reflection, to do values work and to, to look at what your own values are and tie that into abundance. Because abundance, to me, is like also meeting your own terms, like your own definition of success. Because some of you guys have been fooled by... Um, someone or it doesn't even have to be someone it could just be the rhetoric of society to only measure your success by assets and by money and and narrowing in on that means you lose a lot of other things and i feel like there's collateral if that's the case like there is a child here who could be uh missing out on on seeing a happy healthy parent you know that's making the best decision it's not tolerating abuse that's you know um the 
you know, like something here like that, or there is, there is a business that's suffering or there's something here. It's gonna, I think you're going to be surprised. Like it's not over till it's over. And whatever happens in July is what I want to say. Like whatever happens, whether you receive good news or bad news, I feel like a lot of you guys, there's going to be a delay. I feel like if you're waiting on a decision, it's really going to come through probably late August, early September. It's really what I'm seeing. I feel like it's especially imperative for you to, to mum is the word and to button down the hatch mid August, like that change from Leo into Virgo. That's going to be a time where it's really important for you to shush it um, about whatever issue I feel like it's not everything because you're out in the public eye, right? <sighs> Mostly for your work and for your skills, but it's going to be very important for you to not say anything around that time. Um, and all of this, it's, it's taking that long-term view of success. Um, yeah, and, and I feel like at the beginning of the month, maybe... Um, there's still like a lot of anxiety, but as the month progresses, I feel like you guys are getting stronger and stronger and stronger, especially if you're working on these habits and skills, whatever this is like, so let me just see. I know that was a lot of information. I feel like I just threw at you, but like, what did I miss? You're moving forward. I love this. You guys, the chariot is all about, um, cause this comes after the lover's card, which is esoteric Venus. Um, but it's, it's about choice. The lover's card is about choice based on values. And chariot is all about making decisions and moving forward based on your values, on what that is. Um, after you've done some reflection here with the high priestess. Look, like keeping quiet, keeping secretive, keeping to yourself, that's going to lead to some kind of success here with the six of wands. You've got the six of wands here twice. I really feel like people have their eye on you. Um, but I feel like it's saying like, let your actions and your skill set talk. Oh, look, there is a child here for some of you, emperor and child. It's like a father and son or something. Um, I didn't really ask any of the page of cups. Why is the page of cups here? Some of you guys, like there's going to be a spark of imagination. Oof. This is a contract or something for a new idea, a new. I think for some of you guys, if you pull back, if you don't rush any of these decisions, if you have this long-term view, if you are remain in this self-protective energy, um, then whatever is about to shake out here in the month of July, because I do think there could be something, there's going to be a wrench in the plan. Even if it's like, you know, something's going to get thrown off here. Somebody's waiting for you to mess up. Ah, this is queen of swords. You guys, there's some really manipulative person around you. This person's really good with their words. Really good. Don't rush in. Don't let this person like, don't let this person talk you back into it. Maybe you always take this person back and that's what you're doing is like, you're transcending this like behavior or something. But, um, I feel like there could, I don't know, there could be some kind of new idea or new agreement or something that's going to come through. Yeah, of like, how can we make this work? How can we... Yeah. This is uniting opposites energy here with the chariot. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. I know that was a lot of information, but basically I feel like there are two ways that this energy is coming through for most of you. Um, it doesn't change your soul focus. The soul focus here is to focus on the long term, especially in regards to balance. You might be, feel like you're a little bit out of balance. It's not exactly comfortable for you to be in this energy in the month of July. Some of you are, you're just already feeling like you want to open up. You want things to be better, but your soul focus here is to, um, it's not over till it's over, run through the base, set a further finish line for yourself than whatever, whatever has been set here, try to hit a further beyond date because that's, what's going to carry your momentum into like this long-term success. 
Um, just definitely being very self-protective, not rushing into your decisions, doing a lot of reflective work. Um, for some of you guys working on like what your value set is and folding it into a more holistic view of abundance um, and being in this trickster energy where you're transcending convention, stuffiness, and predictable behavior. Um, Yeah, because you might have found that your values have changed or that your values don't represent this other person's values and you've been like always conceding to theirs and that if, if you've ha been having self-esteem issues, it could be because you haven't been standing up for your own values. You've just been kind of caving to this other person who's so manipulative and please don't get down on yourself because this person would fool. This one has the devil's tongue right here. Oh, Knight of Swords. Yeah. And this person can be a bit of a know-it-all in some in some regard. I feel like for some of you guys, this is definitely a marriage where there's been a lot of discord. Um, but it's not for everybody here. And I just feel you feel hurt and betrayed and, and you're transforming the way you're viewing that partnership and the way that you approach partnerships in general. Um, if this is your health, like I said, um, it's just, it's wanting you to establish a firm foundation and think about these long-term goals and benefits and... Um, like, I don't know, maybe even having some kind of accountability system, but um, avoiding triggering places and keeping on going, like building up good habits beyond whatever you think. There's really a strong energy around drinking in this pile. Like just to be like, I don't mean to be offensive when I'm saying this, but I feel like you'll get what I'm saying. Like be the grandpa in the situation. Be the, you know, because like I said, there, somebody could be trying to trick you or thieve from you or something here. This person's so smug. They're so smug. But this, it's just, you know, it's saying isolate and go no contact. So that is, maybe that's not what you were looking for in a soul focus reading. I know that was like more than I expected in a soul focus reading. Um... Okay, and if this is a marriage partner and you've already decided to get divorced, maybe you haven't filed paperwork yet, there is something here about hiding. If if you're like, yeah, this has been over for a while. I like this other person. I'm ready to start dating. I feel totally fine with it in my soul. Whatever that is. I'm not here to judge you or your decisions, but it is telling you to be alone. Um, yeah, I'm just, it's not done until it's done. And even if this person, because I'm telling you, you guys, this person, it's like, trust me. Yeah, we're on the same page. It's good. I'm telling you, don't trust this person. Don't give it an inch. They will take a mile and they're going to blindside you. This person is duplicit. What is this? I just want to see, like, what is this manipulate? Like, what's their goal? I feel like it's thievery of some kind. What's this person's goal? Pile number two. Victory. How are they defining that? This person could be trying to turn people against you. So that's why it's telling you to be quiet. They could have, that's what I'm saying. They could have flying monkeys. This person has like a forked tongue and they know how to put like, to present a good image out in the world to people. So just, I, I see you elevated in every single one of these pictures. Your energy is elevated. Just keep that in mind. Keep yourself like protected do not be goaded into anything. Don't get into petty squabbles. Don't be baited into anything. You guys, I'm really, I wouldn't go to a social event. It could be an ambush. I don't know if there's, I feel like you would know what this is. If there's like a company party or something and whatever. Like if you've been going to work, like maybe just skip the party or something. I don't know. Um, I think it's just better for you to ignore it. Not to say, not don't even address it at all. So, yeah, grief. They want to cause you some kind of grief here with the five. Oh my gosh, five, six, seven. Yeah, I don't like that at all. And I feel like there's this energy around you where you're like, well, now I don't really know who to trust. That's okay. It's solidifying. You're going to, things will be clear soon enough, right? With the 10 of cups. And some of these people are just weak and spineless. They're just weak minded. And they're just, that's why they become an agent of like somebody like this is because they don't see, they don't want to see. And um, 
but you're demonstrating this. So I don't know if you saw me shuffle these, but they kind of, they wanted to come out like this. I feel like these two cards are connected here, but you have the higher ground here in this situation and you might have to defend yourself here. The easiest way to defend yourself is by keeping quiet because you're trying to avoid some kind of a betrayal energy here. Um, yeah, so that's what I have for you guys. Pile number two. That was a lot. Um, but if it did resonate, I would love to know in the comments. And if it did, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye, guys. three I love this energy so much you guys are so talented and you're so skilled and yes I do feel like I need to harp on that here for just a minute because some of you guys don't realize how skilled you are and I'm just saying that because you have this queen of swords king of swords energy around you and I feel like this could be like maybe it is two people maybe this is just the general energy around you but I feel like you've had some harsh critics around you in your day and maybe this energy has kind of solidified and and taken up residence in your mental space and now it's like your own internal harsh critic um, and you hear that whenever you are doing your creative thing here with whatever this strong skill you have because it is really really strong um, I'm strongly I'm seeing the energy of Purva Ashada which is the height of Venus it's the Venus ruled nakshatra in the middle of Sagittarius and that is a really interesting energy but anyways I feel like for your soul focus for the month of July it is this skill it is your talents and um, I feel like you guys are there's something about your energy that is very public facing you guys might have a public presence um, even if it's like for your online business but there's something here there's strong teaching your energy there's strong healer energy coming through and if you're not in that space yet I feel like that's what this whole thing is like kind of working up towards and leading to here for yourself so there's a part of you that is very public facing but I also feel like part of your soul focus is um with this eight of pentacles it I'm, I'm just seeing you working on something kind of behind the scenes in a space that feels safe for you and it feels kind of blocked from sight but i feel like with this invigorate energy you're being very invigorated and inspired to like progress forward in whatever journey this is and perfecting your craft and your your unique expression that's what this is i feel like in whatever skill this has you are starting to develop your own individual spin on something and maybe you have critics because i feel like that always happens when you do something very creative every creative no matter what's your medium or what it is you're doing you have your own very personal process and as they say the ends and the means are one so um 
I feel like, again, with these king, king and queen of swords energy here, and I just want to say, like, these people, truly, they don't have the lens, right, to, like, see your creative energy through. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of Venus coming through in your energy. And Venus is very, very creative. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I always describe Venus as being something that is meant to be taken in as a whole. Um, it's a whole creative experience. And when you start to sever the parts away from from each other, then it doesn't really make sense and it kind of loses that wholeness, that that magic that brings it together and the way it's supposed to be appreciated, you know? And um, like think about a movie, you know? If you start cutting it up, maybe you have like certain clips and stuff, but um, the movie's meant to be, it's a story from start to finish, you know? Um, and that's why Venus debilitates in Virgo Virgo is a beautiful energy. Mercury exalts there, but Venus doesn't do so well there because Venus is meant to be taken as a whole and Virgo excels at breaking things down into little bits and dissecting things, right? And that's what this energy is to me. It's like very harsh and it's somebody's trying to kind of critique you and break things down into their parts. But what you're creating is greater than the sum of its parts. And you do have people around you, this queen and king of swords, I feel like these people have tried to kind of position themselves into like a position of power or just um, maybe they have been in a position of power over you. But what I want to say is they don't have authority. And that's like, that's what I really want to say. They're trying to convince you that they do, but you have this archetype that's just now entered your life in some way, shape or form, or it will be there in July. That is true. It's like a mentorship archetype. And that is a person who has legitimate authority, who has maybe gone through the process that you are, have gone through. This is a person who you look up to, you see in this person values that you would like to embody. And they have this high mindedness. There's a wholeness to this person's energy in a very developed nature. And I feel like it's this person's influence. You once you you I feel like you guys are just going to soak up this mentorship archetype energy and it's like once you know what it feels like, once you identify what a mentor truly feels like because it's it's and I do just I don't know why I want to say this to you, but if you've ever worked with a consultant before in any capacity and honestly think about um even like going to a therapist or going to your doctor, think of them as consultants because they're experts in their field. They always do one thing first, right? And that thing is always they gather information about you. They don't, if you walked into your doctor's office, they just started prescribing you medicine. <laughs> you'd be like, um, what? Like, this doesn't seem right. It's the same thing. Anytime you go to a consultant, whether it's business therapy, whatever it is. Um, and the reason being, because if somebody's going to truly be of service to you, they have to figure out what it is that you're about. And I feel like that's what the different, that's what's making the difference with this high minded, energy that you're getting here from this person where they're figuring out what are your values? What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in five years? What's the vision you have for yourself personally? What's the vision you have of your business or of your art, of your craft, you know, and how do those things fit together? Really, really. Um, and then using their expertise to help you get there and not to overlay some one size fits all weird, like join the, join the crowd. No, this person's saying, yes, find your style, individuate. Let's make this what you let's make your vision come to life you know and that's so inspiring and i feel like some of you guys even if it's not a person with this energy it could be a group it could be a book it could be whatever this is like i just feel like it carries this very encouraging very well-rounded um, energy and it's inspiring you to get to work and to really hammer out the details of what makes you unique and that is going to be life-changing for you with this wheel of fortune it might not happen overnight. Um, you know, we have pentacles energy here. I feel like you guys have been perfecting your craft here. Um, I think that a big hurdle for you is just distinguishing between the qualities of voices, right? The quality of advice. And I'm hearing Brené Brown in my head who um, her TED talk that she did on shame. I love that one so much. I know everyone talks about her vulnerability one, but the, the shame one, man, um, because in that one, she talks about the man in the arena quote, and you should totally look it up. It's too long for me to remember, but um, she distills it down for herself. And she basically says um, that maybe you want to watch the whole like shame talk. Just just throwing it out there. It's so good. It's a well, it's like it's time well spent. But um, like she, she says, um, unless you are also in the arena with dirt and mud stuck to the side of your face and you are also getting your butt kicked, then I just really don't want your advice. And it's okay to say that. So another thing that's coming up for me, I just learned this recently, but maybe um, I feel like it's probably like more common knowledge in business circles or people who are creatives and are used to doing this kind of thing, but it's called the three, two, one rule or method or something. But um, the three is that you pick 
three mentors for yourself. And that's so important that you pick those voices because those are going to be people that you admire. They have traits that you want to embody for yourself and they have something kind of in common and you find them to be a higher source of knowledge for you. Um, and so picking three, I'm almost like with this horse, it's almost like you're putting horse blinders on and you're blocking out, right? The fools, you're blocking out this fool energy. And I kind of mean this, you know, the fool is very, it's very young energy. And it's also somebody, I'm kind of just getting it. Somebody who doesn't know you very well and they haven't done any information gathering nor have they thought to do that and I just automatically I'm getting like these people kind of have a lack of self-awareness and that's just kind of a it's a basic threshold to get into the door of your of your space like of your healthy boundaried space boundaries are another thing that's really really coming up here for you guys is just yeah mental boundaries um, and, and there is something here about like once, I feel like if you have these mentors that you go to, if you pick three voices that you want to hear, and those are the voices you're listening to, those are the voices you're following, then it's, you're going to notice qualitatively the difference between this queen and king of swords who look at you like a specimen, who look at you a bit with disgust, who want to kind of tear down things that you've done, who, who want you to adopt their vision, who are very hypercritical and calling that feedback. And as, a po as opposed to this very nurturing, holistic, loving, why don't we try this? Why don't, have you thought about it this way? That kind of nurturing and guidance where they're not like crushing your spirit and saying like, I'm somebody you need to impress or like that kind of gross energy. You're going to, I feel like forever have that imprint like put into, into your, I want to say schemata. <laughs> your the way that your mind kind of operates and this is really important because i feel like this is getting you guys ready for some kind of success i feel like you guys are this ties in with your destiny with this wheel of fortune energy being here and i do feel like there's going to be a moment oftentimes i get this with the wheel of fortune where there really is going to be this turn on a dime moment where things in your life really are not the same and some of you are scared that you're going to lose something that you've worked really hard for and i really don't think that i think you're going to keep growing and expanding because this, whatever skill this is, and that's what I'm saying. Some of you guys, because of this, these negative voices around you, you have not been able to fully understand that you have a gift because these, these people who are critiquing you, it really does come from a place of like envy or jealousy, being very threatened by something that is different and that is raw. With Sagittarius, I often describe this as the card of like the beast becoming man, but I want to say that it's like raw materials that are being shaped into something. It's like you're a hunk of clay and like you're starting to shape yourself into the mug you want to be or the statue that you want to be, you know, and you're so, you're, whatever this is, it's like starting to take a, on a life of its own. It's starting to take some kind of shape or form and you can really see yourself and your unique signature and your process in it. And that spirit is coming through here and saying, that is the beauty of it. And that's your sole focus for July is saying, even though I'm hammering out the kinks and, and some of you are doing this, it feels like a safe space. And I don't know. And some of you, like, there's a part of you that's very public, I feel. But um, when, when you're hammering this out, it's a safe space. And I don't know if it's like, it's still out in the open. You just have somebody that has strong, that sets a, this is the thing about strong leaders. They, they don't allow that kind of foolish energy around because they create and tend safe spaces. And so it could just be this person's influence and energy is around and it's protecting you. Um, or you're doing this like very much in private. Um, yeah, and, and I feel like, some of you guys, like you, you understand now that somebody was trying to hold you back, that people were kind of trying to hold you back and that they were being hypercritical and you can't change the past. Some of you, you're just cutting ties with that. Um, and, and I feel like you're driven here by a sense of duty and that's what infuses your, um, energy here with such juicy goodness from, from spirit. And you're here to help invigorate and enliven other people to teach other people, um, something that's more high, high minded and you're integrated. Now it, I feel like this could be a little teeter tottery here in the month of July, because there is, you have the energy of Purva Ashada and like that has the two gurus in it because Sagittarius is ruled over by Jupiter and Purva Ashada itself is ruled over by Venus. And those are called the two gurus. And a lot of times they disagree because Jupiter is very philosophical and high minded. It is the guru to the gods and Venus is more worldly and it's, um, it's the guru to the demons, but people who are very wrapped up in a worldly sense. And they say like, that's kind of the, one of the, if you have planets in Purva Ashada, that can be kind of a contentious place for them because they don't really know which direction to kind of go in. So there could be this push pull energy of like, well, which voices do I believe? And, and one of the things that they say is if you're going to be teacher, cause this produces a lot of genius teachers, this, this Nikshatra Purva Ashada. And I feel like you're in this energy, regardless of if you have this in your chart or not. 
Um, there's also strong Aquarius energy that's coming through. I do just want to mention that. But um, I, I feel like um, this is a part of what's going to make you a very good teacher is because you can understand different sides of it. And also keep in mind that a lot of you are in this Jupiter moment with the Wheel of Fortune where you're, you are very philosophical and high-minded. But sometimes, you guys, people aren't ready for that Jupiter energy. This is the warning of this nakshatra. And so they'll kind of attack it. And so good teachers, like a lot of times, they'll be able to flip it into that Venus energy, into something like they ground it down into the world. So I don't know if if you got anything out of that where it just some people are not going to understand this energy because it's not where they're at it's not where they're ready and we all have areas in our lives where we're not ready for that jupiterian knowledge and we need that flipped into venus um because you also have venus and jupiter here so part of you wants to expand part of you wants to contract and that's okay you're working out the kinks you're working out like part of your process here and i feel like it's i want to say it's like an inside out job sagittarius carries that energy where they they want to be spiritually developed they also want to be externally right that's why they travel around and they're so well versed in the in the world so yeah for a lot of you guys this is masterful masterful energy i feel like you guys are literally growing into masters um of your craft teachers high vibrational teachers it does not have to be in spirituality this is in whatever this is there's kind of a there's a sagely priestly kind of vibe and you're, you help people to connect with the broader, bigger meanings behind whatever this is that you're doing. And if you're don't, don't feel like you have to do this all overnight or even just in the month of July, I feel like there's just a concentrated effort and you're really getting a lot of support here with the Sagittarius energy. Um, and with this full energy, a lot of you guys, maybe you feel like you've been wearing a mask because you've been so curated. There's something here about flow with this light attribute, fearlessly revealing emotion, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. So there's some Something here where um, like just putting out your emotions Sagittarius to me is like a very la-di-da you know energy like that's that's how I feel in la-di-da <laughs> you know um, because it is again it's so high-minded and that's not to say that every conversation you have a Sagittarius they have a higher perspective that's not what it is but this energy it is it represents high-mindedness and the high mind isn't um, isn't intimidated by any other energy because it knows it's the high mind you know you have to work to get that kind of a perspective there's something here this is what i want to say and this is what i feel like your focus is is to understand that you you are this teacher you are an authority in some place and to really fully rise up and embody that energy and saying like look this just isn't cutting it anymore the rest of us have worked on on being a little more self-aware and of of growing ourselves in other areas and directions and it's the easiest thing in the world to be like I don't get this you know and that's fine but move on to a different space you know it doesn't mean that you've got to tear it down it's not for you um because there are plenty of people around there's group energy here you've got Aquarius energy Aquarius rules over networks it rules over friends you have friends is what I want to say like people who vibe with you and I'm hearing um there's in that new Robin Hood, I didn't particularly like that movie, but my husband likes it a lot. But um, there's a, a phrase in there. It's not Robin Hood. It's um, King Arthur. And there's a phrase in there where he says, why have enemies when you can have friends? And that's what I feel like your energy is. Why have enemies when you can have friends? Um, and that's, that's where you're coming at this from. And I do feel that there is somebody here. And if there isn't, you know, maybe spend a little time thinking about who... Think about what it is that you do and where it is that you're trying to grow and think about who those mentors are, whose voices you want in your mind. Um, I'm just like, get that healthy brain diet is what I'm hearing. <laughs> and um, because it's going to be very invigorating. And also Juniper is used, somebody told me this in the comments section. Thank you so much. I think about it every time with this card, but it's used in making vodka and vodka is something that's used to like sterilize things. And I'm just feeling like you are sterilizing these people's like, blunt object instruments is what I'm, I'm saying because I feel like it it feels like kind of a blunt object just kind of poking at you but um also it's like you're sterilizing your life of this past energy and I feel like you're not really focused on the past you are moving forward and I want to say at speed like there's something here where you've you've been building something up from the base and you're getting ready to take off this wheel of fortune is getting ready to turn in your favor is what I want to say and also you have this healer energy at the bottom of the deck that I keep staring at over here passion to serve others by repairing the bind the the bind yes the ties that bind um the body mind and spirit ability to help transform pain into healing that's you you have this beautiful energy about you where and it feels very dutiful like you're very you know the fire signs duty is and dharma that's the same word basically it's 
one of the four aims of life and it's something that the fire signs definitely focus on and that's why they're so goal oriented and they're so motivated and I do feel like you feel a sense of duty here and that's maybe why you got sucked into these voices is because you care so much you care about what it is that you're doing but I feel like here with this five of swords you are this is Venus and Aquarius so you definitely have something that's different and unique that is still of value with Venus being there and you are kind of, you're cloaked and you're hiding and I feel like you're observing and you're watching and you're seeing where people need a little bit of help and where they're floundering and I feel like you went to work or you're incorporating this in whatever this is that you're doing and it's masterful. It's masterful. People don't always know how to look at that energy and and I just want to say there's something here about um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Like you can put out whatever you put out and you see the value in it and that's enough. And then the way that people are looking at it, that's on their side. It's not something you're necessarily responsible for. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling here at this point, but I feel like you guys, you are trusting in the universe. There's something here about not being so curated, but in the month of July, I'm, I wanna, let me just clarify this because I feel like in the month of July, this is sun and Virgo energy and Virgo obviously is very detail oriented. It's very crafty being the, um, exaltation point of Mercury and also Vir Virgo's ruled by Mercury. Some of you guys are traveling. Okay. That's another thing. It's like, I, I just heard in my head, um, Virgo is mutable earth. And I feel like some of you, you're changing your earth. Some of you are moving. Some of you are, are traveling. Some of you like, that's why like this isolation space, you could be taking like an artist in residence workshop or something somewhere. And you're going some somewhere to consult with somebody and work on something here um, in order to turn things around for you in order to grow in order to expand. Um, this is certainly um, another traveling kind of an energy, but there's something here about integration. And I want to say it's integrating like your lower and higher natures. Okay, and now I'm hearing Hyde from that 70s show where he's trying to teach Jackie how to be Zen. It's one of my favorite episodes, but like she gets mad and she fights Donna and he, she's like, I know I failed. I wasn't Zen. And he's like, no, it was perfect. Where Zen ends, but kicking begins. He said a different word, but um, that's what I mean by like your higher and lower nature where it's like you, you can only give people so much room and then it's okay to just be like, you need to exit my space and to really lay the law down. There's something strong, like having strong boundaries. And maybe that's um, one of your, your um, the people that you're choosing in like this mentor archetype has really strong boundaries and is very good at, very good at this. Look, this person carries like the world on their shoulders and, and has like a strong, strong boundary, I wanna say. Um, and this is moving forward in your own values. And that is what is going to, what is going to change this for you. You're individuating, you're really growing into your own expression. This is beautiful guys. Even if it's weird, you know, we all had an adolescence, right? Like, remember that? Remember how awkward that was? And so when you were going through your growing phase, like maybe you didn't make sense either. I know I didn't, you know? And I was like, I don't know why I look like this. I feel like I'm growing into something else, <laughs> you know? And and lo and behold, you do. And it's 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 known as that like really awkward growing pains. Um, what is this trying to be moments? And I feel like it's taking that energy of adolescence to like whatever this is here in your, in your craft. And it's not, it's, I'm hearing Britney Spears in my mind. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. <laughs> um, I feel like you should listen to that song. I know I'm going to after this. I'm gonna have a good cry. Oh, that was in the movie Crossroads. Anyways, I don't know why. I'm just rambling because I don't want to go. I like this pile so much. Um, yeah. And this is something, by the way, it's not like with this air energy, some people are looking at what you do and they're like, what's the secret, huh? What's, how do I get the pattern, huh? And like the thing of it is like, that's why people can only really ever inspire you. Like that's what you, you're drawn into people's energy that really come alive. But what people want to mimic is the fact that you've engaged in your own self-actualization journey and you've asked yourself the difficult questions and you've gone through the weird adolescent period where you're finding your own, your own voice and your own expression. So yeah, pound number three, I feel like if I could recommend homework to you, which I absolutely cannot, feel free to tell me to mind my own business, but um, maybe just think about who your three mentors would be and what voices you wanna let into, into your head and into your mind. And then maybe even spend some time comparing it to the, this harsh critic voice that I feel like has been around you. I really, I'm sorry, you guys, this is tough. <sighs> um, it's tough, but so are you. So anyways, that's what I have for you guys, pound number three. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye, guys.